All right, peace and love to the saints who are watching this video. I want to start off by giving all praises to the Most High. In the name of his only begotten Son, the anointed Savior of the Bible, right? Who died and resurrected in the third day, right? And now, this is going to be a quick little breakdown, right? Um, it's a, pertaining to John 8 and 32, as you see on the screen. Let's read. Actually, let's start at 31. Then said the Messiah to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right? What does it mean to be free? What are you free from? Let's keep reading. And they answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou? Ye shall be made free. Verse 34. Messiah answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Right? And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided ever. If the son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Check that out. So, what is he freeing you from? Because he said the truth shall make you free. Then he said the son shall make you free. Right? And then in John chapter 14, the infamous verse, right? Messiah said unto him, verse number six. Messiah said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the father but by me. Right. So he's saying that basically that he should make you free. The truth. He is the truth that will make you free. He is the spirit that will make you free. In other words. Right. What is he making you free from? Sin. Let's go to Romans. And then we should wrap this up. I might bring out one more preach up after this. But this should pretty much uh, sum it up. Romans 6, and I'm going to uh, start at verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. You shouldn't sin just because you're under grace. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are to to whom ye, ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness, right? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sins. Check that out. Ye were the servants of sins, of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which, which was delivered to you. What was that daughter? Let's find out. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of man because of the infirmity of your flesh. What is the infirmity? Whatever that thing, whatever that spirit that was working in them, that was weighing them down. It could be a lust demon. It could be a demon that's just working in your mind that, you know, causing you not to understand certain things. Let's continue. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity and to iniquity, even so now yield your members to servants unto righteousness. Right? So that means offer yourself service. Follow out the righteousness. For when ye were servants of sins, ye were free from... This is the key point. For when ye were servants of sins, ye were free from righteousness. So when you serve sins... Or were in captivity to sin, you were you was free from righteousness. So in a way, if you're serving sin or Satan, you're free from Christ. You're free from righteousness. You're free from righteousness, right? What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. So even though you're free from righteousness, you're gonna die because you're still. The most high word will always rule, even though you're 
free from righteousness. <laughs> but now being made free from sin and become service to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness in the end everlasting life. So now that you come into Christ, which is his grace, right, which is the truth and love, etc., you're now free from sin and you're now a servant to righteousness. That's why he said, and uh, let's see, I want to say Philippians. Check this out. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of the, the anointed Savior, so-called Jesus Christ. I say so-called because we know in Hebrew his name wouldn't have been Jesus, but that's not what this is about. So that's why I say the anointed Savior. You see verse 2, he said, grace be unto you and peace. And then another one, right? I want to say Philemon. I think that's how you say it. It might be Philemon. But verse 1, Paul, a prisoner of the anointed Savior. Check that out. So now he's in bondage to righteousness. Right? But he's free from sin. If you understand what I'm saying. So being captive being captivity to sin means you're free from righteousness and you're a servant of sin. But being in captivity to righteousness means you're free from sin. That's what the truth makes you free from. That's all that verse means. Peace. <laughs>